Even if you're not Catholic, you've definitely heard the terms bishop, cardinal, and priest get thrown around. But what is the actual structure of the hierarchy of the Catholic Church? Who is in charge of what? How does someone become the Pope? In this episode of Intrigued Mind, we'll be taking a look at the sometimes confusing ladder of authority for the biggest church in the world. If the hierarchy of the Catholic Church can seem confusing, that's because it kind of is. There are all sorts of titles and ranks, and you can easily get lost trying to figure out who is in charge of what exactly. The Catholic Church is one of, if not the most influential groups in all of Western history, so it's worth taking a look at how exactly it's structured. In the ecclesiological meaning of the term, hierarchy means the holy ordering of the Church, which is the body of Christ, but generally speaking, the term hierarchy refers to who is exercising authority in the Church. In the Catholic Church, below the Pope, authority is mostly held by the bishops. Priests and deacons serve as the assistants and co-workers of the bishops. The term Pope was actually used sort of loosely until the 6th century. This is also when the term hierarchy began to be popular. The Catholic Church is big, and a particular area of the Church's jurisdiction is known as the diocese. There are currently 2,903 dioceses, and each of these dioceses has their own bishop. 144 of those dioceses are in the United States. Dioceses are divided up into individual churches, which are called parishes. Each church parish has a priest, but having more than one isn't uncommon. Each church also has a handful of deacons. That's how things are ideally supposed to go anyway. In reality, there are some churches that don't have a priest. About one in five Catholic churches do not have a designated priest that serves just that parish. There are also about 3,500 churches around the world that are led by a deacon or even a minister who isn't an officially anointed priest or member of the clergy. All members of the clergy, including deacons, priests, and bishops, can preach, teach, baptize, witness marriages, and conduct funeral liturgies. However, only priests and bishops can celebrate the sacraments of the Eucharist, better known in the Protestant world as communion. Priests and bishops are also the only ones who can hear confession and anoint the sick. Only a bishop can administer the sacrament of the holy orders, meaning that they are the only ones who can make a new person into a bishop, priest, or deacon. At the very top, of course, is the Pope. But before we dive into that, if you are interested in early access to videos and live chats with the creator of Intrigued Mind, consider subscribing to our Patreon. Your support will greatly help us keep the channel producing more intriguing content. What most people don't understand about the Pope is that he is a bishop. Pope is not actually a title, but simply an honorific term used for the Bishop of Rome that means Father. Whoever the Bishop of Rome is, that's who is in charge of the Catholic Church. There are a few titles given to the Bishop of Rome, including Supreme Pontiff of the Universal Church and Patriarch of the Latin Church. These aren't exactly as quick and easy to say as Pope, however. There is also the title Servant of the Servants of God, which is intended to serve as a reminder that in Christianity, leadership is really supposed to be about serving others. The Pope is addressed as His Holiness. The Pope is free to resign if he so chooses, as was the case with Pope Benedict XVI in 2013. If he does not resign, then he serves as Pope until his death. The Pope lives in Vatican City, which is an independent state inside of the city of Rome. It was established in its current form in 1929 by pacts between the Church and Italy. The Pope exercises total civil authority within the microstate of the Vatican City. This particular authority of his doesn't mean as much as you might think, since Vatican City comprises only 121 acres and has a total population of 453 people. It is the smallest state in the world in terms of area and population. This results in all kinds of statistical anomalies that make the Pope's state an outlier. For example, it is the state with the most out-of-balance male-to-female ratio. Despite having no real population or economy, Vatican City has an unusually high per capita crime rate due to petty crimes such as pickpocketing against tourists. Vatican City leads the world in per capita wine consumption. All of the officials who assist the Pope and live in Vatican City are as a whole known as the Roman Curia. The term Holy See is used to refer to the Pope and the Curia. The Pope is assisted in his job by other bishops who are considered to be the spiritual successors of the original twelve apostles who followed Jesus in the Bible. In addition to the bishops, there are cardinals, Cardinals are seen as the princes of the church and are appointed directly by the Pope. Usually, the Pope chooses various important bishops from all over the world to be cardinals and form the College of Cardinals to advise him. Cardinals who are under the age of 80 pick the next Pope when a Pope dies or resigns. During the transition period where there's no Pope at all, the Cardinals are the ones in charge of the church. Apart from this, Cardinals aren't really an integral part of the structure of the Catholic Church. It's mostly an honorary title when they aren't busy picking the next Pope. Because of their crucial role in voting in the new Pope, 
Their name comes from the Latin word cardo, which means hinge. Currently, 16 of the 226 cardinals are from the United States. The only country with more cardinals is Italy, which has 48. Having the Vatican inside of your country probably helps with that. A two-thirds supermajority is required in order to elect a new pope. There are archbishops as well as bishops. A bishop oversees a diocese, which is just a collection of local churches. An archbishop is in charge of an archdiocese, which is really just a large diocese. An example of an archdiocese would be a major metropolitan area, somewhere with a lot of people. Archbishops have more authority simply because they oversee more people. Every bishop must go and visit the pope every five years and give a report on their particular diocese. At least once a year, all of a country's bishops will get together in what's known as an Episcopal Conference. Bishops have their own authority to run their diocese and aren't just ambassadors of the Pope. Priests are the clergy members that people are most familiar with. They serve under the bishops and are in charge of the day-to-day -day services of the church. They preach, hear confessions, and serve communion. The lowest rung of the ladder are the deacons. Deacons are ordained ministers of the church who are intended to focus on things like helping the poor and not things like church leadership. They are usually connected to a particular church where they have certain functions during the service. They will sometimes preach sermons and can preside over baptisms, weddings, and funerals. Sometimes, deacons are people in seminary who are getting ready to be ordained into the priesthood. These are called transitional deacons, whereas permanent deacons are people who have no intention of becoming priests. It's much easier to become a deacon than it is to become any other position in the Catholic Church. To be ordained as a deacon, you must be at least 25 years old if you're not married. If you are married, then you have to be at least 35 years old and you have to have the consent of your wife. Most Catholics are not members of the clergy. If you're not in the clergy, then you're a part of the laity. This term is derived from the Greek leos theo, which means people of God. But just because someone isn't a part of the clergy doesn't mean they don't have any sort of a job at the church. Laity can serve in different pastoral and administrative roles, depending on what the church needs. Laity also play a role in services by being acolytes, lectors, and cantors. Not everyone who participates in the liturgy and not everyone who works at a Catholic church is part of the clergy. There are lay Catholics who have full-time professional jobs working for the church. This is actually fairly widespread, especially in North America and Europe. While lay people fill out much of the administrative ranks of the church, the ultimate organization and definition of the church's ministry is left up to the national bishop conferences. These full-time, influential church members are known as the lay ecclesial ministry. If it seems a bit complicated, that's because it is. However, hopefully, this video has helped clear up a few things about the Catholic Church. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.